Okay, well, this one goes out to in Manham a little bit because he's the one that's always against these kind of ideas, saying quantum mechanics is, doesn't affect us, is useless, has nothing to do with us. Well, this is a little story. Chlorophyll power. Subtitle, quantum details of photosynthesis could yield better solar cells. Yeah, I think it's likely. I think we have an understanding of building these kinds of sized structures that if we understand how the plants do it, we will be able to do it ourselves. Now, I think this is a, pretty much about a follow-up to a previous study that showed that this was the process in green photosynthetic bacteria. Basically, you have these cells, you have, uh, they have little antenna, and the photon might strike this antenna, or it might strike its neighbor antenna, and there's odds involved with that. And if it does one or the other, it'll take another path. Now, how many photons make it to where the energy is used, and how many are re-emitted accidentally or absorbed or, uh, into the atoms? Well, that's a matter of chance, and it's one, there's better paths and worse paths, and two, even on the good paths, there's different, you know, just a, this random chance that it'll be absorbed rather than pass by something. Well, um, it, what evidently seems to happen is by using uh, the superposition, uh, instead of a photon just going one way, you kind of have some, what you could call two virtual photons, though I'm misusing that term since that's also another term in physics, but two, you know, whatever photons and um, they travel both ways. Now, because of the way the receptacle is and because you have quantum entanglement, there's relationships between these things. If one of the photons is received, the others cease to exist. Well, they set it up so that they only receive the successful photon. There's a zero percent chance of a, an unsuccessful photon, you know, or, or a low percent chance. So they set it up so they receive only the successful photon ensuring that all the other whatever photons, imaginary or, or uh, in the sense of an imaginary number or virtual photons or whatever you want to call them, those are the ones that cease to exist or weren't real or are no longer real. And um, this is going on in all these leaves. Now, why do we know that or are we sure? Does it really matter? Well, leaves get like 98% efficiency from, so from solar energy that strikes them. Okay, we get like 20%. When we spend millions of dollars on them, because like for a satellite that really needs a good solar panel that's going to last a long time, you know, we still only get like 40%. Meanwhile, for a little bit of dirt, some water, and fertilizer, plants for pennies are making solar collectors that collect 96% of the energy. Now, we are pretty good with building, we haven't got the nanobots working like running machines, but we're pretty good at building things on these small levels now. We can put chemicals one at a time in a lot of cases, though not just with any chemical. But we are really good at that. If we figure out how the leaves are doing it, and we can do it, well this will revolutionize energy right there. Now, I'm a big fan of the idea that we have a really good energy, cold fusion, or zero point energy, or something that would just be free, because I know that if we were flooded with energy, then we will be prosperous as a people. We can learn, we can be peaceful, where there's enough wealth for everybody. It's all based on power, that's the one key. Um, an energy source. Now, the solar energy that good is maybe not, maybe not as, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe it's not as, uh, as good as all that, but it's damn close because, okay, we get 20%, we can get, you know, 100. Well, already, if you cover your roof in solar tiles, you can, you know, you can power a modest house. Uh, if you had five times as much energy as that, then you'd still get two and a half times more energy than you get now on when you had 50% cloud cover and only half of the, the light was getting through. So, I mean, this is pretty good because, you know, if you're getting five times the energy now, the, and you could be an energy glutton, you still have, you know, two or three times more than, um, than you can use. And, you know, you can produce hydrogen or with that energy and, and ship that to places that don't have sunlight. I mean, it, it's the next best thing to free power. Also because you build the panel, you build the panel and then the thing just works. So it's really only a matter of its lifetime. It's not a maintenance. Um, and same with, with getting the water. You know, it's easy to get hydrogen from water if you have excess energy to, to, to get rid of. Um, the problem, of course, is liquefying it and transporting it. You know, it's easy to get it as a gas. But the thing is, too, is that look how these leaves are done. I mean, if we actually had one step better and we grew plants that somehow put off this as electricity, well, I mean, that would be awesome because 
they're not ugly. You don't have to just hide them on your roof. You can have a bunch around you. And for sure, everybody would have plenty of energy. So, I don't know. It's a pretty practical thing. And I do hope we get it. And it might be the most, the first slash most practical. Because right now, they have quantum devices that are very useful scientifically. You know, they can look at the where each atom is on a metallic surface and stuff. But as far as general purpose things, yeah. Cheap, cheap solar panels. Of course, the other thing, and this is really what uh, he's rejecting, is that um, what Gary tends to be afraid of, I think, is the fact that this is, bio this is quantum mechanics in biology. And questions of will and things like that are basically, well, you know, I mean, maybe the universe took five billion years to, or four billion years to evolve to the point that, um, no, ten, I don't know, eight, whatever you, it would be, to evolve to the point where some quantum effect was captured in a molecule. And that, that effect it could be related to will or whatever. He just doesn't like the can of worms it opens when we get to start saying that our brain would use quantum mechanical, uh, would use quantum mechanical physics um, to, for, for something. But you know, the way I see it is eyes are pretty amazing too. They use the photovoltaic effect. It's a fairly recent discovery in the history of man and are very in the history of man. And, um, you know, it's pretty weird too. Who would even have thought that, that there were photons? That light, which is a wave primarily, actually also has particles, which doesn't really make sense how a wave, you know, a wave coming at the shore, how do you have a particle of that? It seems like a whole system. And yet there's this particulate nature. Well, that's weird too, and we were exploiting that. You know, our, we've had, you know, billions of years to evolve around the physics that just happens to be around. We're swimming in it. We don't have to know and understand it in order to evolve a, around it. We're growing around it like if you had a thorn and you need to go around it. Only the difference is we're exploiting it for its advantages. And um, so, yeah, I openly predict that we will find quantum effects uh, all throughout biology, just like we find the so-called classical effects. I think it takes both to make a living system, very much so. In fact, that might be what distinguishes the living system. We'll, we'll see on that one. Cheers.